A wonderful good morning guys. Welcome back to the show. I hope you had a good night's sleep. I was already very busy this morning connecting all the rest of the balance leads for our front row here and I have now included a fuse in every single balance lead here. So we are fused with 5 amps. I've used my, my Velcro again to organize the cables here in the middle of the battery and then the whole sausage comes down here into our terminal row. As I said before, we will replace this one with a different one later on and then we can have two different devices connected at the same time to one balance lead. Okay, I've got my multimeter already here and um, let's measure all the voltages here and see if they correspond to our battery cells and then we can connect our balance leads here before we start the BMS. Man. And then we are pretty much done. Pretty much done. Unbelievable. Okay. All good. Okay, so negative. And let's start with the first one. I hope we can go in there. 3.28. We still have to measure again once the balance leads are connected before we plug this into the BMS because I still can make a mistake by connecting them here on the other side of the terminal block. Okay, let's have a look before we plug this in. Sorry for the noise again. I'm charging the vehicle on full power with both inverters. It is so nice. All right, so first battery. Yeah, three. Six, nine, 13, 46, okay, so far the first line is correct. And now we have to connect the second line here as well, which um, is cell number 15 and cell number 16 and also the main positive. So the main positive and the last cell go together on one terminal and number 15 is separate and we don't need any of the other cables here at all. So and I have to measure here the negative from this bar and oh, that's a bit of a challenge. First positive here, yeah, 49, the last one was 46, 49, then the next one should give us full voltage, battery voltage 52, and the last one is 52 as well. Power supply for the BMS and everything in between is zero. Yeah. It is all dead. All right, that all looks good. Okay, let's plug it in. Let's see what's happening. In here, There's this one and this one. Okay, we are cooking. We are all these cables here, but um, as we know, nothing will happen with this BMS. It needs its boost voltage to start up. We need to apply a higher voltage to the P minus and B minus to start up the BMS. This is the total pain in the ass. I have upgraded my website already with a new version of the JK BMS. So if you are in market of a good, reliable BMS, of a good BMS, there's a new version available, which comes with a display and a button. The push button turns on the BMS without you having to apply a external voltage. So much better upgraded version. Apparently this one cannot be upgraded. It's already the old version. It's not even six months old. So what I have now here is two 18650 cells and I've put them in series so we should have around seven and a half eight volts or so. Let's see. Yeah eight volts exactly eight volts. Okay that should do the trick. And the trick is now to apply the positive to the B minus of the BMS and the negative of your booster battery to the P minus. Just for a second. That's enough. 
to turn it on. And now we should see the LED there flashing. Yep. Yeah. So it's all turned on. It takes only a swipe with a contact, just a microsecond of contacting this starter battery and then the BMS turns on and now it's fully operational. So we should be able to log in with the app now. Okay, so this is now the JK BMS app. We click on our BMS. It beeps and it connects. Ah, it shows us only 13 volts because the last time it was connected was for a 12 volt battery. So we go into settings. Yeah, cell count is only four. It only, see it only shows the first four cells here on the left hand side. Of course we need to change this uh, password. Oh shit, what was the password again? Was it one, two, three, four, five, six? Yeah, it was. Okay, so 16, battery capacity to 80, um, trigger voltage 5, calibration voltage, this should go away after a moment. Okay, let's click on OK. Confirm that, confirm that. Yeah, it's reading now all 16 cells correctly. There's no major difference. We've got a deviation of 2 millivolt, but the battery is only probably 20-25% charged at the moment. So we will see what's going on then once we connect this to the other battery. 52.6 volt, 280 ampere hours capacity. This will calibrate at some stage once the battery is fully charged. Well, there should be there should be nothing from preventing us now turning on the circuit breaker and get some amps into this battery or even out, out at the moment I would say. Yeah, it's mostly cloudy today, so there's not too much happening. I started the test half an hour ago, there was blue sky. It kicked in the generator, our Phoenix inverter, and now we are charging the vehicle with 4.1 kilowatts. But most of the power comes from the battery actually now. So I will expect if we turn this one on now, it will just discharge this battery as well then. Okay, let's um, do some final preparation here. And even the old battery is on roughly 45% now, and this one is probably at 20-25%. The voltages are very similar, so I'm not expecting to have a big current flowing here from one battery into another one with this big load connected at the moment, but you never know. So we will prepare everything now for turning on the main switch here, connect this battery here now to the main bus bars as well. We set the BMS to 150 amps now, in and out. So if we exceed this one, the BMS will turn it off. Okay, so let's do one final check, which is uh, checking the polarity here on the breaker. And we have 52.6 positive. And I'll check at the top as well from the bus bar. We've got, what do we have here? Jeez, come on. 50.6. So it's actually lower on the bus bar than here on our battery so it will discharge the battery there will be current going out of the battery into the system all right that'll be interesting yeah so at the moment here we can see we are discharging the other battery with 72 amps and if we turn on the circuit breaker now this should actually go down because some of the power will be supplied here by our new battery okay without further to do let's turn it on holy shit Okay, here, what we can do is we can set this one here to 60 amps and the max discharge current to 60 amps as well. Just for the sake of safety, right? So if you go over 60 amps in or out of the battery, it will turn off. I have torqued them all. I have marked them with my pen here. Everything is torqued. These two are torqued. These ones are all torqued. I checked all the bus bar connections again positive, I checked polarity, we checked voltages, everything seems to be fine, all balance leads are checked, everything is okay, right? Oh god. And now we are turning it on. Three, two, oh, it's on, it's on, we are live, we are live. And immediately we can see a reduction 
by about 30 amps. Here on the old battery now. So if we go back in the new one, we should see, yep, yeah, the other 30 amps are coming from this battery now. Man, we are up and running. The two batteries are sharing the load now. Yeah, we always want to see some amps flowing, right? Twenty-eight. Yeah, this one shows us twenty-seven, twenty-eight as well. Perfect. So this is all good. Okay, we will monitor the situation here, of course. I will turn on the thermal camera as well in a few minutes and check all the bus bars out. But I think we need to keep this one running here for a while and see what's going to happen. So now we have 560 ampere hours connected and we also need to modify our shunt because the shunt still thinks we are on on 280 ampere hours. If we would keep this system running now for a while of course this one is higher charged than the new battery so the BMS of this battery will turn this bank off first and then the whole show will run on one battery bank. It could happen that we overload our single batteries it could happen that we overload our single battery bank then and the circuit breaker trips or the uh, fuse inside the box here trips then because this is the only power supply for all our load. This situation only gets worse if you have more battery banks, if they're all shut down one after another. Well, and at the end, you will end up with only one battery bank left supplying all the power for your system. And of course, the same will happen when we charge up this whole system now. So this battery bank will be full the first before we hit the same voltage with this battery bank here. But charging is not such a problem because the solar charge controllers are all set to a 3.45 per cell. And if all these battery cells hit 3.45 before this bank here, they just don't take any energy anymore and all the charging power goes into this bank until this one catches up to the same voltage and then they absorb and float at the same voltage. So the whole system should balance itself after a while. Actually after the first charge. Yeah, that's right. And again, we've got the QUCC BMS in here. If we hit an over voltage situation with one of the cells, it will just disconnect this whole battery bank and all the power will then go into the remaining battery bank here. But we are not hitting the 3.65 volts because the solar charge controller settings are fairly conservative what I'm using here. So yeah, at the moment this is all up and running. So here at the moment looking at all these voltages here, uh, I can't remember that, that I've seen this before, but this looks very nervous to me here. All these voltages are going up and down by a hundred millivolt or something all the time. It looks all very unstable and even the main voltage here is going up and down, up and down all the time. So I'm not sure if this is just a calculation thingy or whatever. And I can't remember if we have flagged this before with this BMS. I think we did, but I need to rewatch my own videos apparently. But yeah, at the moment everything seems to be fine so far. So let's see how it performs during the afternoon. Okay, see here in the app, the voltage goes up and down all the time. Okay, let's just measure here the voltage at the circuit breaker. Um, we've got fairly stable 51.7, 51.8. Nothing like this, what we just see there. Ah, now the sun comes out again. And the voltage is rising actually here, because it uses less power from the batteries. 11, 11 amps only. See, the voltage reading calms down a little bit. But it's still going up and down a lot. I just measure here one battery cell. Just to give us an idea. This is battery number one. Which is uh, 3.25, stable. And the app measures 3.3, 3.28, goes up and down all the time, like mad. Oh, 
that's how you detect problems. You're sniffing on all the cables. If they get warm, you can smell this very quickly then. And it's all good here. So I just stopped the car charging and solar is bringing in 900 watts and 7.8 amps going into the battery. The battery is the whole, so both banks combined. And I was wondering how much of this 7.9 amps go actually into the new battery. And if we look this up here, so around 6 amps going into the new battery. If we have a look here in the old battery, only 2 amps going in there. And this is only because the voltage of both battery banks is exactly the same, but the state of charge is not. And the old battery is likely to rise faster with its voltage than the new one because it's already more saturated. It is on a higher state of charge. And now the system is already balancing this out because the new battery is on a lower state of charge and therefore takes more energy from the charge controllers. That is very interesting. I don't know if this works. I'll give it a try. I don't think it's hot enough. And now it needs to cool down. <laughs> it works! Yeah, so this will just sit here on top of the battery here to prevent any contact with the terminals here. We can easily take it off if we need to maintain it, but it will stay on there. I wasn't quite sure if I can bend the PVC board actually, but yeah, it worked kind of. I think Miss Piggy is just not quite strong enough to heat up the PVC. So that's all good. I still need to find these cable mounts. But yeah, guys, so far, I know even the good things have to come to an end. <laughs> so has this video. Yeah, battery bank number one installed and learned a lot. For example, don't lean on the hydraulic crimper. It's not good. As always, guys, thank you so much for your support here on the channel, for all your generous donations. And until the next video, guys, here on the channel very soon, you stay charged and stay safe. Thank you again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. I've put one of the temperature sensors here under the cover on top of the batteries and the other one goes into the circuit breaker. Look at this. Yes, this is perfect. It checks my circuit breaker. Well, if this is good or bad, I'll let you know.